Hi, I'm Cole Krasny from Woodbridge, Virginia in the USA. This lesson is for week three of Introduction to Music Production at Coursera.org. I will demonstrate how to record and edit automation in my DAW and demonstrate two effective uses. I'll be demonstrating using a light version of Ableton Live. Automation is a key tool to alter values within a track over the course of it being played. Pretty much every knob and slide can be set to be automated or in other words, adjust itself over a specified course within each track. There's pretty much two main ways to do automation within a DAW. The first way is to record automation, which can only be done in version 9 of Live. You can do this by being in the session view, having the bottom portion set to the clip view, click on the automation arm button, make sure that the arm sets and recording button is armed as well, which allows for overdubbing of the original automation trail, make sure that the session record button is on as well for the audio track. Make sure that you have the desired clip inserted into a clip slot. Also, I would recommend soloing it out from the rest of the tracks and even setting it up to loop. In my example, I'm doing a crescendo to the intro of my song, so I'm going to turn down the track volume all the way. I'm going to hit play, and when I'm ready, I'm going to drag the track volume up gradually. When you're done, copy that clip into your arrangement view window and you'll see the automation written out. Like this. These values show the automation trail. The second way is by drawing in lines with a kind of pencil tool. Or by creating drop points and dragging those points around to alter the line that's drawn in on the track to represent that automation value. In this example, if I pull this volumetric parameter to the right, the crescendo becomes steeper. And if I pull it to the left, the crescendo becomes shallower. Being here in the arrangement view gives you a kind of visual idea of how it changes over time within the track, which is really cool and very helpful. I prefer the second way, because I can manually set points at specific times to make it gradually decrease or increase certain values at specific times. With the first way, I might not be able to do it as smoothly and perfectly as the way I can tell the computer to do it by manually clicking in or drawing the points on the arrangement view. But the second way can also be very tasking, where with the first way, recording the automation, you can alter values back and forth as the clip is playing, which is much faster for a long piece of MIDI or audio. In Ableton Live 9, it seems that there is no way to change between latch and touch when it comes to recording automation, which can make it a little more difficult. It seems that it kind of has a default of touch, so when recording automation in live, keep that in mind. In this next example, I'm going to show automation with panning. I would never recommend taking just one single track and panning it immediately left 50 and right 50 back and forth like the way I'm doing it here, because it can cause odd clicks to occur. But I'm going to do that here just for demonstrative purposes. This pretty much wraps up my lesson. I hope you have a good day.